Hello everyone, I'm Jojo from View of Smart Chain, and I wanted to talk to you about security and blockchain and being online in general. While the crypto industry is great and full of opportunity, as with any industry, there are bad actors. The difference between bad actors in Web3 versus in traditional industries is that in Web3, they can easily remain anonymous and transactions that occur cannot be refunded. However, these negatives can be easily avoided by being aware of how bad actors typically try to take advantage of you. Once you are aware of the red flags, noticing and avoiding scams becomes almost second nature. To show what to look out for and what information to not freely give out, we'll go over a typical scenario of what an interaction with a scammer would look like. With this, we will be able to see how the information normally asked for by scammers is used to gain control of people's funds. To start out, I ask a question about Vivo Smart Chain in the Telegram chat. While the messages are from me, imagine yourself in the same situation if you were asking general questions as well. The question I asked was in the official Vivo Smart Chain Telegram channel, which is a place that is okay to ask questions. If you are ever asking questions via our public channels, please keep in mind that our community members or team members will take the time to address your question. It may not be immediate given time it should be addressed. The scammer also sees the message I have sent. Since it seems like I have questions or are in need of assistance, the scammer decides that they are going to be posting a support to try and convince me that they are here to help me with the issue. However, since they want to remain anonymous and not give themselves up in the public chat room, they reach out to me by DM. When looking at the scammer's account, we can see that they have taken the time to make sure the account looks official. They have their profile picture set to the VSC logo and have a username set as something that a support agent would likely have. After receiving this message, you should already be starting to get suspicious. Why? Because this person is claiming to be from support and has also reached out to you personally. We see consistent notices and warnings in the VSC public channels that team members and staff will never DM you. So the fact that this person is doing that should stand out to you as a suspicious thing. The reason why scammers message you in DMs and how they benefit from it is because by doing that, they are putting you in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Doing this prevents others from stepping in to expose them. Because of this, it is the ideal environment for the scam to work. Ignoring that a person claiming to be from support DM me in private, I proceed to message them believing that they are actually support. In response to my message, they have asked me to provide them with my email address. This is another thing that should come off to you as suspicious. The reasoning behind the need for the email is unclear and doesn't really relate to anything I asked about. In real life, support staff may need your email to assist you, but giving it to a random person who has messaged you and claimed to be support may not be the best idea. For the scammer, having your email address doesn't directly enable them to take over any of your accounts. However, it does give them a way to potentially trick you into giving them more information, which they can use to access your account. Again, I ignore the suspicious signs and provide my email address to the scammer. They then tell me to provide them with a one-time password that has been sent to my email address. This should seem extremely strange and suspicious if you are being asked it. There is absolutely no reason why an official support staff would ask for you to provide them with a OTP or one-time password. As the name suggests, it is essentially just as valuable or important as your actual password. Giving this to someone is the same as giving them your password. The reason why the scammer asks you for this is because he is aware that to log in to Impersona, you can just use an email address and a one-time password that is then sent to that email address. So since they already obtained my email address, they attempt to log into Impersona with it causing a one-time password to automatically be sent to my email. 
to be able to log into the account, they are relying on you to give the one-time password to them. Again, I ignore the red flags and give the scammer the one-time password that was emailed to me. And as you can see, they were able to log into my account with it. Now the scammer is asking for the PIN number associated with my account. This should come off as extremely suspicious. Again, there is no real need for any support agent to ever ask this. And even if they did, you should never provide it to them. The scammer asked for this because they know that if they have access to your account, like this scammer currently does, they need the pin to be able to send crypto to a different wallet. In other words, this code is the last thing they need in order to take off with all your assets. And as you can see, the scammer now has full access to the account and has the ability to send the funds to a different wallet, making it so that you can never recover the funds. It can happen incredibly fast if you are not careful. I believe that this is the most common method scammers are trying to take advantage of users today, as some people may not be aware of the dangers that sharing these pieces of information opens them up to. In addition to the one-time password, the mnemonic phrase and private key that was created when originally making your wallet are both things that should never be shared with anyone, as this will also allow them to gain control over your wallet. During this talk, I showed you how scammers will try to take advantage of you in order to gain access to your accounts, and more importantly, your funds. When interacting with Web3 and crypto, you must make sure to be on the lookout for these suspicious things in order to make sure that you do not become a victim of the scammers. Here is a checklist of items to think about when interacting with people on Web3 who are asking you for information or trying to get you to do something. The first one is, why do they need the information they are asking me for? Is it relevant to my situation? If what someone is asking you for doesn't make sense for what you are asking, don't provide them with anything. There is no need to give people any information if you don't want to, so it's better to be safe than sorry. The second one would be, if I give someone this information, are they able to potentially act in a way that can take advantage of me? It is always good to be aware of the potential consequences of sharing a piece of information with someone. If you know that sharing an item with someone could lead to negative consequences for you, it's best not to share it. Taking the time to go over and learn what the piece of information could enable someone to do with it is also something I would recommend as you may discover something that you were not aware of. The third thing I would say is, if the person I am interacting with was a random person, would I be comfortable sharing this information to them? It is common for scammers to pose as a representative or team member of a company. We as humans subconsciously give more trust to people who we view as authority figures, so it is always good to take a step back and view the situation objectively. If this person you are assuming to be a team member was actually just a random person, would you be willing to give them the same information? If the answer is no, then you probably shouldn't share it. And lastly, if this person reached out to you personally, it's always best to just take a screenshot of the message or user and post it in the main public community channel to see what official team members say. There is no rush, so it's best to ask questions and double check to be safe. I hope I've been able to give some additional perspective into the mind of a scammer. Let's all make an effort to remain safe and help others do the same. Thank you.